hope Kerala will be the last of this type of a disaster. But unfortunately, it's not. Indeed, the floods in Kerala claimed more than 400 lives. They damaged more than 8,000 houses and destroyed the network of infrastructure that is simply mind-blowing. The economic loss as per the state government has been put to about 20,000 crores of rupees. Indeed, Kerala will recover from the economic losses, infrastructure will be repaired, houses will be restored and the people will go to forget the tragedy as they're going to forget it so often. It's just a matter of time. However, the indirect environmental cost could be much more and its implication for the country too will be far reaching. Kerala has been one case. Kerala is going to see its reputation this time in Goa, coastal Karnataka and some areas of Maharashtra too. Certainly, all sorts of problems are beginning to surface on the environmental front in the Western Ghats. Goa may face the same fate if it does not take precautions on the environmental front. Like in other states, Goa too is witnessing mining and quarrying activities. Although Goa does not have Western Ghats which are so high as it is in Kerala, but Goa is not taking any environmental precaution in general, guided purely by the greed for unlimited profits. The union government constituted a Justice M.B. Shah Commission has estimated illegal profits to the tune of rupees 35,000 crore rupee from illegal mining in Goa. Extensive study on Goa's environment based on the data provided by iron ore mining companies in their environmental impact assessment, that is EI reports, that were prepared in 2011 were almost completely cooked. The mining companies submitted false information in their EIA reports. Every EIA suppressed facts about the hydrological impact of mining. On the Sadas, that is the plains of Goa, there, were, there are a lot of streams which are originating, but the EIA reports do not mention about them at all. Other than Goa, there are other areas in India which will also not be away from such type of an impending disaster. India has every reason to be concerned about the disturbing trends in flooding seen in recent years. Although floods are the most common and recurrent natural disaster in India, but their frequency and intensity have increased lately. Earlier, floods were mostly riverine in nature confined to the Brahmaputra Barak Valley, the indo gangetic Plains and the Deltaic regions of Odisha, Andhra Pradesh and Kerala. Now, incidences of flooding are being reported from smaller river valleys, some small hills, plateaus and even deserts as well, if just and maize flood are to be taken into account. Moreover, urban areas are getting flooded much more frequently and these are not limited only to cities or rivers or coast. Now, even cities such as Bangalore and Jaipur are getting flooded. This aberration in flooding trend is a real cause of concern. Why does this happen is related to a number of factors. First, the rainfall pattern is changing. While the average seasonal rainfall has not changed much, its distribution in space and time is changing. This is leading to an increase in the number of dry days, decrease in the number of rainy days, intense downpour in fewer days, and heavier rains in areas that had meager moisture content in the atmosphere. The resultant effect had been on water storage on dams, drains and flood protection networks, some of which were designed on the parameters based on past rainfall and flooding pattern. Their resilience has also been compromised because of poor maintenance. Some of the British era infrastructures are in for urgent overhaul, retrofitting and even reconstruction also. Second, the new infrastructures like houses and industries may not fulfill the global standards of resilience. In trying to build these new infrastructures, there is little consideration of ecosystem service. In our strategic approach to economic growth, 
we hardly have taken into account ecosystem services in the cost benefit analysis uh, and calculation of internal rate of return to of projects and uh, there has been hardly any internalization in this case. Third, our water bodies and floodplains which provide natural cushions to absorb and drain excess water and recharge groundwater have been encroached upon by an apathetic planning and even more an apathetic implementation of city expansion and other type of human settlements also. People have moved closer to the rivers unmindful of uh, the consequences of uh, moving close to the river. Our vegetative cover and forest uh, which help provide cushion to slopes and protect them by reducing runoff and increasing infiltration uh, and thus prevent landslides and protect the environment uh, have been badly damaged by mining, acquiring uh, hotel and resorts, uh, road construction and other money spinning projects uh, on which uh, the attention of the government, the policy makers is much more. True, we are bringing new policies and bringing new legislations to reduce risks and build resilience, but directly or indirectly, we are creating new areas of disaster, new risks of disaster and are compounding the already existing hazards knowingly or unknowingly out of uh, apathy or out of callousness. The Disaster Management Act of 2005 and the National Policy on Disaster Management 2009 prescribed uh, integrating uh, disaster risk reduction in the process of economic growth uh, across all sectors. But such integration and mainstreaming has uh, remained largely elusive. The governments have been lax on implementing environmental norms. The central government looks like actually bending over backwards to make sure the National Green Tribunal does not function properly. Indian middle class and the general mindset is under enough amount of a stress not to understand the dynamics of risks and disaster. The academic work on the disaster is far from being comprehensive and even if it is, even if it is done by some people, it has hardly got the acceptability that it deserved. We have improved upon many spheres, such as on a multi-hazard early warning system, EWSA, which has improved, but we are yet to develop a modern EWSA for, the, for floods. We are able to forecast rain with a degree of accuracy, but we are not ready with a flood warning system that would facilitate evacuation of people the way it's done during cyclones. Despite all that we have done, all technology inputs that we have used and all administrative machinery that we have created, our focus of disaster management is still largely on managing disasters that are related to what happens after disaster and that is post-disaster scenario rather than on managing the risks of disaster. That is risk assessment, risk prevention and mitigation and disaster preparedness. We are yet to set up a national, state and district mitigation funds that were mandated by law some time back. We need a disaster force in the state and district, both of them and at that level. The tragedy of Kerala signals that a lot is yet to be done and we will be in for some more from other parts of the country. That once again will entail some amount of economic loss and a huge amount of economic loss and God forbid that if it incurs, it will also go on to dent our psyche as well. It will go on to happen because we have mismanaged our ecology. It's high time we need to understand that better ecology is better economics.